Let me bring in Maurice Jones-Drew, nice. NFL Network Analyst. He also uh, does the Rams Radio Color Analyst as well. You can follow him, uh, Maurice Jones-Drew, on Twitter, at MJD. How are you doing this morning? Um, I'm doing I'm doing great, actually. I finally got a chance to uh, get a chance to call in and talk to you. It's been a while. Yeah, I, and uh, I appreciate you getting up early after the game last night. What were your expectations last night? Um, you know, I, I think there there were there were two times that uh, obviously this year the Rams split with the the Cardinals. So you saw early in the year where the Cardinals were hot and defensively did a great job of uh, you know forcing Stafford off his spot, and then you know obviously getting interceptions, and then on their side of the ball that's early in the year. Kyler Murray kind of took over the game, utilizing his legs, running. And then there was a second time where the Rams kind of dominated from start to finish. And so was a little concerned when you saw J.J. Watt coming back and, you know, um, defensively they, they've done a really good job. Vance Joseph's done a really good job of getting those guys in position to make plays. But if you watch the Cardinals down the stretch, they, they struggled the last five games. So expectation was if the Rams started fast, you know, you probably could jump on them and, you know, um, get them, uh, kind of get them out and have a little doubt set in their mind there. And that's what they did. It, it really started from the Rams defense, whose secondary was banged up. You're starting uh, some guys that are uh, Terrell Burgess, Nick Scott. Those are core special teams guys who ended up starting at safety for the Rams. And kudos to Raheem Morris for getting those guys prepared. And, and, and Eric Weddle coming in after retirement. You know, to be honest with you, um, I, I told Sean McVay uh, after the game, well, I, I kind of like joked around, but I was l- a little serious that if you guys keep getting retired guys, like, let me just let me know so I can get in shape. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, you don't have to go too far. I'm right here calling the games for you. I know the offense. I've, I've been watching. Um, but, no, look, gr- credit to those coaches and players for stepping up in a, in a huge game and, and playing really well to, to get that first three and out and then get the ball and get some big explosive plays and then kind of start playing field position and, and go down and, and take the game over was huge. How important is the running game for the Rams? Oh, it, it's it, it's 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 underrated, I think, because when you see Matthew Stafford and Odell and Cooper Cup and those guys, like you're like, oh, they got to throw the ball, but you have to understand that offensive line needs to go forward, and they need to be able to weigh lean on guys. They're they're a bigger group. Um, they love the zone scheme, and and what what it does is it allows that that defense to kind of play on its heels a little bit with the play action pass, and so. With the, the addition of Cam Akers, and, you know, and like I said, I said this last night, no, no disrespect to Sonny Michelle and Daryl Henderson. They did a really good job this year, but Cam Akers comes in, it looks different. Yeah. And if you watch that game, the Rams just look different with Cam Akers there with his explosiveness, his elusiveness, uh, and then the way he finishes his runs. Like, he finishes like Sonny Michelle. Um, and so when you got two guys that are going to run downhill and break tackles and run through guys, uh, it kind of it takes its toll on a defense, as you saw last night. Um, I'd also like to say this. I hope Buda Baker is okay. That was a big collision there. Um, and there were a couple of them in that game. Um, and, you know, you saw the Rams running backs fall forward. And so when you can run the ball the way the Rams did and you could utilize the play-action pass, Matthew Stafford had a clean pocket pretty much all night. And so and let's not forget that they have, you know, uh, two premier pass rushers, possibly three of Marcus Golden, Chandler Jones and J.J. Watt there rushing the quarterback. And I don't think Stafford got touched all night. So um, that, 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 that tells you how important that running game is. How does the, this Rams team match up with the Buccaneers? Um, I think they match up well. Uh, I haven't really – I watched the Bucs last game. And before I had like to call games, I try to go a couple games back just to see how they're playing. Um, I know obviously they're, they're, they, had, they have a lot of injuries going on there. Um, obviously the Antonio Brown situation, but, you know, they still have Gronkowski. You still have the GOAT, the greatest of all time, and Tom Brady. You still have Mike Evans offensively. Uh, supposedly we'll see if they get Leonard Fournette back. Um, but I, I think they match up well defensively for the Rams. They do a really good job of stopping the run. They have a guy that can lock up with Mike Evans. You're going to have to figure out a way how you're going to stop Gronkowski. And then offensively, you know, you, you know what the task is. And I think Todd Bowles and, and – has done a great job. I think that, um, you know, they're going to come out and kind of play, man. I was just listening to what you were saying about the Eagles not being the, 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 or the least ready team for the playoffs or something like that. Mm-hmm. Um, look, you got to get off press, man, in the playoffs, right? People are going to be simple. They want to play fast. And, and if you're playing the Buccaneers, they're going to get in your face and try to beat you up a little bit. 
um, and you have to be able to protect. And so it's going to be a big part of, of the Rams getting that running game going and being able to protect so that you can get these receivers um, out in space and, and try to make some plays. So it's, I think it's a good matchup for the Rams. Um, but you got to go to Tampa, and that's always tough to do to fly east to west and or west to east, excuse me, and, and get out there and play play a game in, in a different environment and climate. Maurice Jones-Drew, NFL Network analyst and uh, works for the Rams radio color analyst and former NFL running back. You could start your team with Jalen Ramsey, Aaron Donald, Von Miller in his prime. All of them in their prime. What do you want me to do? Pick one? Yep. Oh, no, there's no way. Why? How, how, how can I pick one in their prime? They're all dominant in their prime. You, you, give, you pick one, and I'll, I'll start a team with them. Okay, how about this? Give, give, me how, give me what the Rams have now, right? You see Vaughn Miller show up big in the game. Aaron Donald shows up big. Jalen Ramsey's covering guys, making plays. It's tough to it's, – I, I don't think you can lose with that. In their prime, right? Yeah, but I'm asking Bob you, Miller. you're going to start oh. your team. It's a fantasy draft. It's tough, man. I, I would have to, you know, I'd have to say Aaron Donald then. I think interior pressure is the hardest thing for a quarterback to deal with. Now, you can double team him, yes, but still the guy dominates and changes games. We've seen double teams and triple teams, um, and, you know, it happens. Von Miller, great job off the edge. Uh, when he was in his prime, but a quarterback can kind of step up if you don't have that that pocket uh, that pocket being pushed back to him. And then if you have Jalen Ramsey, yeah, he shuts down half of the field, but if the quarterback has five or six seconds to throw, it kind of takes that away from him. So I think they, they all work together, but if I was going to pick one, it'd be Aaron Donald. Yeah, with it that's Aaron the right – Aaron Donald's the right call. Yeah. He did all right there. Trying to put me on the spot, man. You can't, you can't do that. You know, that's, that's my job, man. i got to talk to those guys. I if never they hear this. I, you know, I'm gonna have to answer to it. I never knew you to be afraid. Oh, never. It's not about being afraid. It's just you know, I just don't like to. I don't like you know. Back in the day when I was much younger, I loved confrontation. Now I'm, I'm as I get older and more wise. It's more about just enjoying the peace, oh, peace of mind. Okay, all right. If I said JJ I mean, Watt or Aaron Donald in their prime, oh, I'm gonna take Aaron Donald all day. I played JJ Watt in his prime. And how was that? He played for the he played for the Texans. He was a monster, but he played for the Texans, so I can't give him no respect. <laughs> you know. Did you ever talk to anybody on defense? All the time, talk to him all the time. Yeah, why wouldn't I? You know, I mean, I'll tell you what. I'll tell you a quick story about JJ Watt. We played him. I don't forget what year it was, but one time we played him in Houston. I swear it was like. We've tried to block him with seven people, and he still got to the quarterback. <laughs> and I was just like, dude, like, come on, bro. This is too much. Like, there's no way. There's no way this guy is just dominating all of us, right? Um, and so we tried to block him with eight, and that didn't work either. So we just figured we'll just do one-on-one and take our chances with my guy, Blaine Gary, back there. He's got to scramble and get the ball out. <laughs> oh, Blaine Gabbard is your quarterback. And I get to see Blaine this week. Yeah. It's amazing. Yeah. Look at the football life, man. I get to see my guy Blaine this week. Got him a Super Bowl. You know, I'm excited. He gets to learn behind Tom Brady. You know, he gets to compete there in Tampa. I love it. I'm all, I, this is what football is all about. It's about competing and still seeing the guys that you went to, to battle with every day, hanging out. I can't wait to take a picture with him and just say hello. I've, I missed him. How much of a, a factor can Derrick Henry be? coming back from what he came back from, and then you dive right into a playoff game? Oh, I, I mean, listen, it, I've always told people this about Derrick Henry. They always say, like, rate running backs. And they'll be like, why don't you ever talk about Derrick Henry? I was like, he's not a running back. He's a unicorn. <laughs> You'll never see that again. You'll never see anyone 6'3", 250 pounds, that big, that fast, running the football. So it's late. It's still late in the year, and, and he's had a couple weeks of practice, which he should be good to go. He may have a little rust early in the game. But this is the thing. If the Cincinnati Bengals don't stop his feet early, if you don't get him to, like, stutter his steps uh, within the first couple yards of the line of scrimmage, you're going to have a long day because he's just going to run downhill. That's all he's going to do is just keep running downhill, and by the time the game's over, he'll break a, a long one. Um, I know his foot injury is a tough one, but, you know, with, with the way, you know, technology is and surgeries and guys we saw, Cam Akers just came back from Achilles in, like, six months. Like, 
I, he'll be fine. And, and to me, he's going to be a, he's going to be a handful in the playoffs. He, he's going to be a handful. Not only he's going to be a handful, AJ Brown will be a handful, and Julio is going to show up as well in a timely situation. I guarantee it because they don't they don't need Julio, but he gives them that like you go on single, you're just going to cover Julio one on one. Okay, well he's going to get a jump ball here. So uh, the addition of Derrick Henry in that running game uh, is going to be something that teams are going to have to deal with, and Cincinnati's first up with it. Will Tom Brady know your name if he sees you? Come on. Come on, man. Are you kidding me? You don't think me and Tom, me and Tom, we're from the same area. We've talked. Okay. Tom knows me. Okay. I just, I, you know, like that just, I'm just curious. No, man. See, now, you know, see, you, 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 you act as if I just, you know, I just call games on, on radio for the Rams. And then I, I, I work for the NFL Network as if I, we weren't peers. You know, there was one time, there's a story. One time I was working at the NFL, they were playing the Giants, and Tom looked me in my eyes and he said, Maurice, how have you been? And I looked at Tom like, hey, man, how have you been? And you want to hear a funny story about it? You know, like, you want to know why Tom knows me more than anything? Tom's uncle, Chris, was my principal in high school. So Tom really knows me, me and Tom are kind of like that. You know, we're, we're kind of close, closer than you would think. No, uh, you, you know, know my- we got family ties. My apologies. Okay. My, I'm just trying to make sure you know. That's what just, And then all the football stuff, he's going to know me regardless. But we got family ties. Yeah. It's different. By the way, what, what size is your neck? I don't know, man. I'm trying to lose it, though. I think it was at one point it was like 18 and a half, 19. So I'm trying to get, you know, to regular size. What's a regular neck? What you, size is a regular neck? Uh, probably 15, 16. Okay, so I'm gonna try to get down there. I'm gonna try to get, you know, I may want, I may even get skinnier than that. I may try to go to like a twelve. How do you, how do you lose weight in your neck? Uh, well, I think it's you know what you eat and doing a lot of neck exercises, possibly. (laughs) I I think you go from from traps to ears. You don't really have a neck. Yeah, I was, and I tell people this. I was bred for football. You know, some people are bred for other things. Your boy, I was built. I was created in a lab, in my mother's <laughs> lab, to play football. What's your okay. official height and weight? Uh, like right now or like when I played? Playing weight. Playing weight. Oh, oh I was like 5'7", 208, between 208 and 215. Oh, you seem to play bigger than that. Uh, again, like Derrick Henry, I was a unicorn. You know, you can't just put <laughs> Whoever's running backs, you know what I mean? I know what it's like to be a unicorn in the game. All right. Well, good luck. Uh, you know, I, I hope you and Tom get to uh, renew old acquaintances there, and uh, always great to hear from you. Uh, always good to hear from you as well. I appreciate it. And, hey, go Rams. Thank you. That's Mojo, Maurice Jones-Drew, NFL Network analyst at MJD.